a cop. Sounds like a... What you gonna play now? Clap it. It's not a repeat, so turn up the volume and start rocking to the beat. Cause I'm on a beat line for your funny bones. So lock all the doors and disconnect the phone. People say I'm crazy, a madcap loon. Kids talk to me like I'm a cartoon. Just for your entertainment, I have been employed. So turn on, tune in, sit back and enjoy. Right here on the BBC. Oh, darling, you spoiled my surprise. I was looking for something to match the rings on your dainty fingers. Oh. <laughs> Sergeant Lily! I think that's what's known as a guilty silence. Wilkins? Oh, no, it's not that. It's just that I know anything I'll say will be used in evidence against me. I got all the evidence I need now. Thank you. Well, What's the matter? You don't think it's loaded, do you? Well, it's not. It's not my style to go out with women with heavy artillery hanging off their earlobes. Makes it easier to spot them in identity parades. You're wasting time, Wilkins. You remember the weight of the station, don't you? Look, man, this is ridiculous. I was trying it on for my girlfriend. You're Claudette. always tying it on, Wilkins. If I hadn't spotted you, you'd have been off with this one. Then come back later to finish off the job. What's the trouble here? Well, you're about to witness a major bust. You've heard of the police smashing up drugs rings? Well, he's gone one better. Earrings. <laughs> Sir, you want to press charges? I'd strongly advise it. No, I'd better not. Delbert might not keep an eye on the stall again if I ask him to. The defence rests. Now, if you'll excuse me, Sergeant Lilly, I'm going to go and buy some eggs. The one on your face reminded me. <laughs> long, all right. Sergeant Lily Summer lasts all year round. You see, it's a personal vendetta, you know what I mean, darling? He is Wiley Coyote, and I'm the roadrunner who keeps getting up his nose. Meet me. Oh. <laughs> Tell me something. Has the roadrunner renewed his road tax yet? Of course he has. Claudette, my life has changed since I met you. I'm a responsible citizen. I've got over 30 credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Sergeant, are you my personal policeman or something? Look, cut yourself some slack, guy. Have a day off. Otherwise, you're going to make yourself ill. Then you'll have to join the Royal Ulcer Constabulary. <laughs> Is that your vehicle outside, Wilkins? Yes, it is Mr. Wilkins' car, Sergeant. Go on, darling. And what's more, it's taxed till November. That's right, this November. And it's got four new tyres, and they never fell off a lorry. They're not big enough. <laughs> that only leaves the licence, doesn't it? If I show you my licence, Sergeant Lily, will we be free to go? Of course, miss. Providing he's got third-party insurance. Third party? What's that? The one you go on to at 8 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Come on, Delbert. I know a good bus stop near here. Bus? Baby, I can't get a bus. Someone from the face might see me. <laughs> Wait, this is police brutality, guy. So, complain. I will. To the listeners who check out my oh-so-elusive radio programme. You should tune in, Sergeant Lily. I might even dedicate a record to you. An appropriate one. Searching, searching, <laughs> so long, searching. You're never gonna find it, sir. <laughs> oh, God, it's Winston. What do we do? We let him in for a start. You know what he's come for? Yeah, probably the same as the last three nights to ask you if you let him have another go on the radio. Why couldn't Delbert have told him how terrible he was? You know how Delbert talks. If he said to him, Winston, that was totally bad. Well, he'd take it as a compliment. <laughs> you have to do it, Alex. But I can't. It's the way he looks at me with those great big sad shades. I haven't got the art. <laughs> Alex Kazobolis, the man who charges extra for taking the stones out of the olives. <laughs> oh, hi, Winston. Sorry, Flower, I didn't see you there. Well, I had these on, didn't I? <laughs> if any fan mail had come in. What, for Delbert, do you mean? Well, it wouldn't be for me, would it? 
What makes you say that, Winston? Because I've just heard the tape of the show I did. Awful. I couldn't get a job reading traffic reports on hospital radio. Why didn't anyone tell me? Oh, you weren't that bad, Winston. It was teasing troubles, that's all. Do you mean that? You're right, Winston. It is all for Delby. <laughs> there was a call for you, though. Yeah? Yeah, Brixton Hospital Radio, traffic department. They wondered if you liked 12 pounds. Alex, <laughs> stop it! <laughs> Look, even Dalbert had to start somehow, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. He used to try and make himself sound like Tony Blackburn, except he sounded more like his barking dog, if you ask me. <laughs> Being a disc jockey's like any other sort of jockey. If you fall off the first time, you get straight back on the horse, right? Yeah. I think I'll go and try and explain that to Delbert, see if he'll give me a spot on tonight's show. Cheers, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Julie. I'm sorry, Alex. I couldn't help it. Just do something useful, will you? Put some stones back in these olives so I can charge extra for them. <laughs> if that's the neighbours, I'm not turning that up any louder. Get your own stereo. <laughs> Maybe you couldn't hear the phone for some reason. Yeah, well, this is what I call my spondicious hour. It's like a happy hour, but it's longer and louder. <laughs> You're such a selfish boy, Delbert. Always thinking only of yourself. So, uh, this is just a friendly diplomatic visit, then, is it, Mum? <laughs> Take a seat. Delbert, the hospital is in dire need of transport to bring the old folks to the outpatients department. I hope you're not and thinking about using my car, you know, because it's busy doing community work itself, allowing me to tour my kingdom, being thrown open to the public twice a week. Just well, shop a minute, Delbert. What we need is a minibus. But of course, with all the cuts and everything, we can't And afford you it. thought, who do I know who could nick one for us? No questions. <laughs> You. I don't do that ragamuffin stuff anymore. <laughs> well, I never did anyway. Well, I never got caught. <laughs> no, no, no. What I thought was, who do I know who maintains a decent standard of living without any visible means of support? <laughs> no, here is your chance to put your expertise to some good use. Raising money for old people. Mm-hmm. Wrinkle aid. <laughs> Some skanks and schemes starting to take place already. Oh, good boy, Delbert. I knew you would help me. Well, perhaps I'll take a cup of tea now. No problem, Mama Rooney. Coming up. <laughs> Put on a kettle and boil a pot of rice. <laughs> uh. <laughs> no problem, Mum. One steaming hot cup of tea coming up. <laughs> it's a revolutionary new concept in war units. Mr. <laughs> so Terence Conran rang me up and asked me to try it out. He said, Yo, Delbert. I said, Yo, tell what's happening, Patty? <laughs> yeah? Hi there, guys and girls. Up and up. This is Winston on the BBC talking to all you business men and business ladies. <laughs> what do you think of that, Delbert? Well, never mind all that. Come up here and fix this. <laughs> yeah, but look, I 
I'm only talking about five minutes. Winston, the Titanic sank in less time than that. <laughs> Look, I'll get three hours to do my show, right? Yeah. Into that precious time, I have to squeeze the following. Two dozen crucial tunes. Yeah. The Delbert Wilkins Soul Search. Yeah. The World According to Wilkins. Yeah. What the papers say, yeah. what the papers should be saying, but damn, because they're all owned by Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> Including that one. I don't have the time to Look, 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 Julie said I should get straight back on the horse. What she probably said was you should get straight back in the hearse. <laughs> Debbie Dell, but I think you're being very mean not giving Winston another chance. Do you hear that? And she's a student. Yeah, future PhD. Yeah, protects hopeless DJs. <laughs> I'm the one who's protected him, saving him from further humiliation. Oi, hang on, hang on. What? This is my radio station we're talking about, you know. Yeah. I'm the one who decides <clears throat> who goes in there. And I'll tell you, Delbert, if it's bead curtain in your after, you can't do better than Murphy's in Dolly <laughs> Thanks, Alex, for that vital information. Sounds just the place for all my furnishing wants. <laughs> Gentlemen, good evening. Have it hanging. Good evening, sir. <laughs> oh, remember that. Just the place for the young couple starting out in life, eh, dearly? <laughs> do you gentlemen want to see the menu, or have you just come in to be suggestive? Wilkins! PC Monkhouse and I have just realised that now's about the time when you entertain us on your illegal radio programmes. So, we thought we'd keep an eye on your movements for a while. Be my guest. <laughs> Here's a couple. <laughs> Anything incriminating so far? Mmm. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to run this down to forensic and have the boys check it over for noxious substances. Oh, a bag! <laughs> Thank you, sir. Julie, I, I'm turning out for the police cricket team next week and um, I wondered if you'd like to come down and watch. <laughs> no, thanks. Don't make up your mind now. Think about it for a while. Don't <laughs> bother you. Uh, Acha. Acha. <laughs> Winston, that's. Uh... Toilet's free now. Remember how you said you thought it needed fixing? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You better put an out of order sign on the door, Alex. Um, this may take a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> Happy plumbing. <laughs> yeah, Wazim, how would you feel about giving me a lift home, ma'am? Sorry, Del, but I'm getting a night bus. Well, I'll come with you. You can show me how it works. You can have a lift with us if you like, Wilkins. Nah. Takes all the fun out of you guys following us, doesn't it? <laughs> Remember, count up to a hundred first. <laughs> Madhouse! <laughs> Evening all. This week, the Delbert Wilkins Guide to Cruciality tells you how to handle a visit to your friendly neighbourhood police station. How to keep your head when all those around you are getting theirs kicked in. <laughs> That's a popular misconception, right? Because underneath it all, the police are just like you and me. Well, like you, anyway. <laughs> what you've got to try and do is treat them like friends. That's right, friends who you want to hang out with. Or would do if they didn't keep trying to arrest your brother. <laughs> but that's besides the point. What you've got to try and do is ask them out for a drink. Well, except don't ask them for a drink, because in police jargon, that's a bribe, you know what I mean? And if you do that, you'll end up not only not drinking, but also not eating and not sitting down. <laughs> I suppose what I'm trying to say is, going into a place like this is no big deal. After all, you do pay their wages, right? Why do you think they call you sir? It's because they know you can get them the sack if they don't. So treat going into a place like this as if you're going into your own home. Say to yourself, this is my front door. This is my Texas home care carriage lamp. <laughs> Just in case they don't understand cruciality, this is my suicide pill. <laughs> Did you guys design Michael Jackson's new face? <laughs> Strange, isn't it, how the eyes seem to follow you around the room? Perhaps that's because they belong to you, sir. Nah, can't be me. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilkins. Call me Delbert. All my business associates do. Uh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> Take a off your back, Thank you very much. So, what sort of business did you have in mind? Creating closer harmony. 
Now, you probably think that means me doing a duet with Luther Vandross. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm talking about is for the good of Brixton guy. Ah. If you mean that trouble you've been having with Sergeant Lilly, I know he can seem a bit fierce, but his heart's in the right place. Yeah, Papworth Hospital waiting for volunteers. <laughs> So how do you like to show Lily the way to do real community policing? Not very much. All right, check out how this sounds. A charity cricket match between the Delbert Wilkins All-Stars and the Brixton Police Mean Machine. All proceeds could go towards a minibus for the local hospital. Sounds great. And to show our good faith, our team could donate a pound to the fund every time your team scored a run. Now you're getting the idea! <laughs> What's a run? <laughs> Perhaps we've got to make that a fiver. Uncle Jake, how's your life? Isn't that what I'm supposed to say to you? Yeah, but I haven't got time for small talk today. We're playing the Brixton Police Mean Machine. Tell me everything you know about cricket. You mean like the rules of the game? Yeah, starting off with the most important ones, like what do we wear on the field? I thought this. <laughs> well, any blood that gets built on that wouldn't show up so bad. What do you mean, blood? I thought cricket was a game played by gentlemanly sort of dudes. So it was, when I played with Clive Lord. <laughs> You played with Clive Lloyd? What, was he on drums and you were on the sax? <laughs> when we played cricket together, and I was good too, then the bowling started to get heavy. So I said to Clive, Look, boss man, I don't want any stitches in my face. I want them in my suits. Stitches? <laughs> I'm only trying to put you wise, Dalbert. Those police guys, they got a point to make. Yeah, but I'm West Indian. We rule the world in cricket, don't we? Sure, but I've seen some real mean, wide, fast bowlers. Fred Truman, Jeff Thompson, Dennis Lilly. Lilly? And that was played especially for Delbert Wilkins, who's going to be lying at death's door for the rest of his life. And was flattened by a wicked bouncer. Something that you wicked bouncers at the clubs have been trying to do to him for years. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Uncle Jake, exactly what does an umpire do? Brixton <laughs> Broadcasting Company Playing for your community All right, this is the leader of the pack with an update on the confrontation that's going to make King Kong versus Godzilla look like Kramer versus Kramer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about later on today, right, when the Delbert Wilkins All-Stars wipe the Brixton Police meme machine off the face of the earth in the interests of good community relations, of course. This day will go down in history as the day David beat Goliath again. Except last time, Goliath never had a riot shield to protect him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be doing a ball-by-ball -ball commentary from the middle of the pitch. This match is going to be so exciting, it'll look like we're playing edited highlights. How are you going to umpire the match and do your broadcast at the same time? Winston, you're looking at a man who can eat three shredded wheat. Yeah, but they do little ones now. <laughs> Let me simplify this for you, Dread, right? I'm relying on you to supply the technology while Claudette handles all the pledges that come in by phone. Yeah, but you're still going to need someone sitting there, aren't you? An anchor man. That's right, someone I can throw overboard. <laughs> See if I can catch your, oh, I've done a couple of radio shows and suddenly I'm Emperor Roscoe Drift. <laughs> you want me to let you take over my radio program again? Yeah. <laughs> Ask a silly question to get an answer from Winston. <laughs> and I suppose you're expecting me to get that. That's right. The worm's turning, Delbert. Hello? Early bird here. Yeah? <laughs> Jake? Yeah? You're joking. Yeah! All right, man. That's Willard, Willard, Willard. Yeah, all right. See you later. My All Stars lineup is complete. If you're getting that excited over Jake, it doesn't say that much for the rest of the team, Delbert. <laughs> oh, yeah? Shift. 
Nah, then this is gonna be my first batsman. It's meant to be a fun day, Sergeant. You don't have to wear the uniform. As far as I'm concerned, this is Christmas Day in the trenches, Monkhouse. When the last ball's been bowled, I'm going to go through that lock with a fine tooth cut. I wonder if I should put them in first if I win the toss. I don't give a toss what you do. <laughs> patrol the boundary. Any pitch invasions? And they're all nicked. <laughs> all right, we're batting. Well, you're batting. As umpire, it's important that I remain strictly neutral, you know what I mean? So listen up. We've got to hang on to that psychological advantage, you know what I mean? That means you've got to go out there and score that crucial first touchdown, right? And don't let them get possession of the ball, you quarterbacks. Isn't that American football, Dilbert? <laughs> yeah, that's right. OK, change the tactics. I don't want to see any early strikeouts, all right? And that's baseball, Delbert. <laughs> it's the same difference. <laughs> Anyways, how you play the game that counts. All right, so what are we going to go out there and do? Win! Because what's the word the All-Stars don't know the meaning of? You be with us! That's right, so let's get down and get out there. I'm going to stand out there, draped in your jumpers, looking like some kind of woolly telecom tower. Forget it. All right, now move! Yeah! yeah. yeah. All right, let's go there and give it to them. Right on. Right on. Right on. Right on. Right on. Let's go up. You only seem to have ten men, Del, but do you want to wait until the other one turns up? Nah, that's Uncle Jake. He lost the key to his body clock some time ago, and now it takes him ages to get wound up again, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, he's like his trousers. He'll turn up in the end. <laughs> the best team win. And Brixton. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Out. <laughs> call yourself an umpire. Why not? You call yourself an Australian. <laughs> ah, well, you know what they say. I've counted them all in, I've counted them all back out again. Yeah, but we won the Falklands War, Delbert. <laughs> well, how much do I owe the minibus fund? You're the accountant, you tell him. Nothing. Yeah, but, um, how many have they scored? Nothing. Yeah, but it's early days yet, Alex, and we've got Uncle Jake coming in next. Oh, blimey. I better take out a second mortgage on the shop, then. <laughs> middle leg, umpire, please. Uh, yeah, that's, um, that's well middle and leg. Rock. <laughs> 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 Right. The Delbert Wilkins All-Stars are now playing their joker. Five pounds? Oh, great, thanks. And the address? How many more ways are there to describe a six? <laughs> My advice to any low-flying aircraft in the area is to avoid this particular air corridor to evade the awesome firepower of my Uncle Jake. Just listen to the crowd going wild. <laughs> He's winding me up, isn't he? He's trying to give me heart attack. I'll sack him for this. You're going to advertise the job or make an internal appointment? <laughs> And here's a message from my mum. You've just got the back wheels of the minibus because Uncle Jake has scored 200. <laughs> Except the police have probably put the number at half that, you know, the way they do at CND demos. <laughs> While they're in total disarray looking for the ball somewhere near Watford, it's time for me to talk a little bit about fashion. You see, there's nothing square about this square leg umpire. Oh, no, sir, Bob. For those of you listening in black and white, I'm standing here in a totally wicked bitter lemon silk shirt with matching... <laughs> You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say that was Clive Lloyd. <laughs> nah, it's just because Uncle Jake taught him everything he knew, that's all. <laughs> Go for it, Sergeant Lily, and bring me a kebab on the way back. <laughs> This outside broadcast is about to come off the air for some urgent engineering work. <laughs> Possibly surgical, too. Uh, you're more Sergeant Lily, what's happening? <laughs> what, what am I going to do, Claudette? Well, just do what Delbert does. Yeah, I tried that and it didn't work, and I got a bad throat from doing it, all that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, just be yourself.
Right. Uh, OK. This is not the Delbert Wilkins show, and this is Winston. And for the rest of the afternoon, I'm going to be playing you the kind of music I like. Right? Hey, it's Sunday afternoon, so let's just mellow out and play something for you cricket widows out there and for all you other ladies that have been left alone this afternoon. Here's Maxi Priest. Be thorough, lads. Search everywhere. I know there's something illegal in here, even if it's not a transmitter. It was just freak atmospheric conditions, guy. It just sounded like my voice coming out of the radio. <laughs> you must have heard of those geezers who pick up shipping forecasts on their fillings. You know, one minute they're eating on their teeth, <laughs> next minute they've gone back to bed because they know there's going to be a hurricane. Get him out of here, monk house. The sound of him's making my fillings drop out. I don't let anybody leave. We'll search the cars after this. Best part of the day. They're already leaving, Sergeant. The match has disintegrated. What's all the hurrah? Lily's looking for criminal evidence. He thinks he'll find the ashes. <laughs> He's not trying to arrest you again, Delbert. Does he get paid on commission or something? No, he gets paid by the yard. <laughs> that loser, eh? Hey? He didn't lose. The game's been officially abandoned as a draw. You what? Are you trying to do my mum's hospital out of its money? You owe us over a grand, guy. Yeah, and what about the All-Stars win bonus? That's what they do in proper cricket. I'm sorry, but you didn't win. Oh, sure we did. On a faster scoring rate. But we never scored any. And whose fault's that? Sniffer the wonder dog there. <laughs> in one second, Wilkins. I'm going to savage your leg. <laughs> Officially, the umpire's the only person who can decide the result of the game. Correct. Delbert went that away. <laughs> Listen, Clive, I am so sorry you were so rudely interrupted then. Man, you were scoring so quickly, we could have raised enough money to build the Delbert Wilkins Hospital for Crucial Diseases. <laughs> Clive Lloyd Ward, and he, of course. Glad to be of help, Delbert. Anything for a pile of jigs. Well, listen, maybe I can do you a favour sometime. You know, if you want any modelling doing. Doesn't have to be cricket pads, you know. <laughs> Man, he's so like Clive Lloyd. What if it is? Well, uh, that would mean the All-Stars have been using a ringer, as they say in horse racing. It isn't cricket. Aye. And neither's red in the changing room in the middle of a friendly game. You set race relations back 30 years to before the black and white minstrel show. <laughs> Well, perhaps when they come back, we can restart the game. <laughs> You'll not see that lot again. They've left their clothes. My God! <laughs> They've left their clothes. <laughs> Get me my spare uniform. <laughs> I'll never leave this town, Monkhouse. That's what comes of trusting Wilkins. No, Sarge, that's what comes of trusting nobody. What you're looking at? You've never seen Miami Vice before? Yeah, sure. I was just trying to work out who was Crockett and who was Tubbs. <laughs> I'm not getting out of this one, Wilkins. That's right, I'm not. That's because I'm driving it to the hospital instead. PC Mancas was so embarrassed at all the harassment you gave us at the game that uh, we did a little deal. Now that you've got your 007 version of this one, you know, with the uh, poison darts fitted to the hubcaps for those tricky moments, we bought your old one off you cheap. Want to see the receipt? No. Just move along, will you? Anything you say, Sergeant. Meet me. Come on, impeccable, tie seven chances of close. Just in time. 